Hi, I'm Mitchell Dale, and this is Rugby League Week's Friday Arvo footy. What a game we've got tonight. We've got the Roosters, the Cowboys. Cowboys are flying. Roosters hit a bit of a roadblock last weekend. Here to discuss the big game is Martin Lenahan, Eric Growth Jr. Boys. Thank you for joining me, boys. What do you reckon? Can the, uh, can the Cowboys keep riding tonight? Mate, I think the Roosters are going to come back for me. Look, the Cowboys have been fantastic. Blew Brisbane off the park at the start of the game last week. Put the queue in the rack. Look, it's interesting with the Cowboys, their, their finals record. This is, of course, the ground here at Allianz where they've, uh, they feel like they've been shafted the last couple of years. And I still, they're still whinging, aren't they? Whinging about Tarek Sims, the judiciary, the whole world's against them. Uh, if they come with that attitude, they will not win. Well, the siege mentality does work some clubs that we've seen over the past, uh, particularly the, the Wayne Bennett coach sides, Manly love on it, love it, they thrive on it. Can the Cowboys uh, do the same? I don't know. I think with Jake Friend back in the fray, I, don't, I can't see the Roosters losing. And to me, with the full strength side there, if your body hold up, holds up all right, I, I see him going back to back personally. Yep, and Aidan Guerra is back as well. They're two massive, huge massive game. conclusions massive for the game. Roosters. Yep. Uh, but we've got to say, I mean, the Cowboys have been going very well. Their forward pack is the equal of any in the comp for me. Absolutely, they made a heap of metres last week. I think Matt Scott and three other guys all got well over 100 metres. Obviously going to miss Tarek Sims, but speaking about their forwards, boys, we caught up with Boydie Cordner from the Roosters this week. Here's what he has to say about the, uh, the Cowboys pack. Yeah, it's going to be massive. I think, you know, they've got a, they've got a couple of test props and Matty Scott, he's playing some of his best footy and also Jimmy, um, he's been awesome off the bench for them. And, you know, it's, it's not just them, it's, it's their whole forward pack, uh, Jason Tumalolo and, um, you know, Gavin Cooper is playing some outstanding football. You know, they're just a, they're a great team and, you know, really tough forward pack there. And I suppose they've got a pretty crafty number seven as well. So um, they're going to be, you know, really tough and we've got to prepare really well for Friday night. Yeah, certainly is a huge effort. Uh, Jason Tamalola, how good's he going? A pretty interesting story in the magazine this week. They're saying that he's, uh, he's the equal or better of Sonny Bill now. He's more skillful, hits a hole a bit harder than Sonny Bill too. Uh, huge match up there with those two. That's massive. It's a, it's a massive call, but it's not one for me that's too far out. You know, obviously time will tell. Sonny's an, an awesome athlete in every sense of the word, but Mates, yeah, mate, why not? He's big, strong, and he does. I reckon he does hit the hole harder. He, he actually times a little bit better and really bursts through, whereas Sonny's kind of a bit of a, a slower strength, not as explosive. Well, that was a point that was made in the magazine as well. He is a little bit built, a little bit lower to the ground. He is a bit wider, and he can just sort of torpedo through a hole like that. Well, in saying that, I wouldn't like to be punched in the face by Sonny Bill Williams. But yeah, he is, you're right. He's got a bit of a, a lower, stockier kind of robust, more robust build. And yeah, just at the last second there at the line, he just seems to really have this big explosion that kind of busts him through the other side. There's what no a, punching anymore, mate. You don't have yeah, to you're not allowed. That. That's good. What, what about what SPW? About he's, got, he's got potentially <laughs> one game of rugby league left, maybe maximum of, uh, of three. Uh, we've just been waiting. We've been thinking he's about to explode. He's about ready to go. Haven't quite seen it yet. Is tonight the night? I reckon you'll see it for sure because, like you said, there could be possibly three games left. And with Sonny's legacy and how he likes to put his stamp on, on games and, and just sport in general, I think he'll be busting at the seams to just put his stamp on it. I reckon the Cowboys do have a slight edge in the forwards. Boys, an unbelievable pack. And we, uh, we actually caught up with the Cowboys, corralled them at the airport on their way to Sydney just to see how they're feeling about the game. Then the showed if you get in their face and uh, you be real aggressive on them, uh, yeah, you're going to be in the game. It's, there's two good forward packs there. At the end of the day, I think whoever wins the battle of the forward packs will win the game. You know, they've got two good halfback pairings in both sides and plenty of speed in both sides. But I think whoever can lay the platform and, and win that forward battle will be real key. Yeah, it's going to be massive. What do you reckon, Eric? Can uh... Tip the roosters, mate. Yeah, I've got to tip the roosters. When you've got blokes like Roger Tuivasa-Sheck making 175 metres in the losing side, like I just think, and with the forward pack back in full deck with um, Friend in there and Guerra now, mate, I think they can do it. Cowboys hammered them earlier in the year at, uh, up at Townsville, but I think just this game being in Sydney, big crowd advantage to the Roosters. Cowboys have got to forget about all the bad stuff that's happened there, forget about being dogged by the NRL, all that sort of stuff. Just come and play the game. Roosters by four points for me. Yeah, I'm with you two guys. Look, I think it'll be close. Um, I just think the Roosters probably will have a little bit too much, particularly there at Allianz, where unfortunately, I think the Cowboys season is going to come to an end for a fourth year in a row. I think you'll all agree something's been missing from our lives from the past month, and that love, is love. the big oh. red boot. Oh. 
It's back, the Encouragement Award. I think you've got something special. I hope you've got something special for us today. I do, I do. I'm uh, very excited to be back uh, holding this lovely big boot. Mate, the Encouragement Award this week goes to the NRL for allowing dickheads to keep playing the game. I'm not saying Michael Ennis <laughs> is a dickhead, but on the field he can be, and he was, to Cameron Smith. But Cameron Smith, you deserve it, because I've seen you be a dickhead. Good on you, boys. Keep it up. It's fun. Spectators want to see that kind of thing. What do you reckon, boys? So you want to see the? Uh, you don't want to see a no dickhead rule? Well, I don't because then if the game's just all clean cut and you know everyone's perfect and all the rules are met and that would so just like be boring. A bit of, a bit of, I like seeing a little bit, bit of niggle and I, I like seeing a bit of reaction to the niggle and you know if we didn't have little tenacious, angry little competitive hookers in our game, then. It'd be boring. As I think well. JT came out, didn't he, and said that he didn't like what Michael Ennis did. Oh, no JT, disrespect. come on, buddy. No, no respect, come he on, said. Mate. He's a legend, JT JT. I love him. I love him. He's a little niggler he himself. He did it in Origin as well. Reached around and gave Bo Scott a little uh, tickle up yeah, as well. Yeah, he gave so him a little slap across the chops. And Bo, Scott, game, Bo Scott's nickname's a serial killer, so he's done his little fair share of little sly I'll, things. I'll tell you what, if, if we get back to the dogs for a second, I reckon they all really responded to that. Like Michael Ennis drew a line in the sand, he went after them, and everyone responded. And if that's going to win them a premiership, I don't think they're, they're going to, uh, to care too much. But what everyone says what happens on the field stays on the field. Is that right? Like, you know, if you niggle the hell out of someone for 80 minutes, you're going to walk off and think, oh, yeah, that's, that's all, all done and I'm going to leave it out there? What happens on the field stays on the field to a degree, but I'll, I'll be honest, like, if someone's been a a tool to me all game, and I see him later at the pub, I still think they're a tool. Because I think you've got to carry some of that. Yeah, you know, that's how you compete, and that's cool, and that's how you make team win. And I think that's helped, helped dogs hold their lead and, you know, and win that game against the Storm. But, yeah, it's not going to win you any friends, definitely. And, you know, at the end of the day, you can say, oh, it was just how I, comp I was a competitor that way and whatever. But people, they'll say that, yeah, it stays on the field, but I reckon that carries over. I've seen people out after games, and they've been wankers, you know, during the game. And you still think they're a wanker at the nightclub, you know? Unless they come up and go, look, mate, sorry, here's a drink. Sorry and if you're doing wanker. it every week, you're just a wanker. That's all right. We need wankers. Well, there you go. Uh, I'm not sure who we give the, uh, the award to. I think it was the NRL. The NRL for allowing dickheads to play our game. Good allowing, to have it back, though. Allowing a bit of niggle. <laughs> we'll say, uh, the boot's been missing for a while, but it's back. And, uh, With Eric a vengeance. the boot in. Boys, that's it for us today. Thank you, Leno. Thank you, Eric. Thanks, gents. Uh, cracker of a game tonight. Roosters and Cowboys should be a belter. That's it from us at Friday Arvo Footy. We'll be back again next week.